Hey folks, Bruce Naylor here, and today I wanted to make a video that covers how I make my YouTube videos, what gear I use, what lighting I use, what how I edit my videos, and how I store the files when I'm done with them. So let's get right to it. Now the first part of the process, and I think for me the most difficult part, is actually to come up with the idea of the video that I want to make. And so I basically have a notepad here, and as ideas come to me, I'll jot these down. And then I will do some research on the topics that I want to talk about. And I use uh, your comments, for example, as uh, potential uh, topics for videos. I use TubeBuddy, I use Google Trends, and a whole host of other technology websites to come up with ideas and to do research for these videos. Okay, my main camera that I use for my talking head videos is my Canon 70D. This is an awesome APS-C camera or crop sensor camera, uh, which has, uh, there's a new version called the ADD out, but this works really, really well for me. I love the color that this camera produces and I love the super fast autofocus and that's important when you're a one-man band, you don't have somebody, you know, racking focus for you or manually adjusting the focus on the camera. Paired with this camera, I have the Canon uh, 18 to 135 USM lens. Now, this is a minimum or a maximum aperture of f3.5, so it's not really ideal for my room because it's a little dark in here. But with a little additional lighting, it actually does a pretty good job. I'm looking to upgrade this lens probably to the Sigma 18 to 35 art lens, somewhere in the near future. Another advantage of this camera is it has the built-in flip-out screen, which is perfect for a lot of people making YouTube videos. So you can see yourself, make sure you're in frame. You don't want to record a whole video only to find out you were out of focus or you weren't even in the shot to begin with. Now the Canon camera comes with several built-in picture styles, and really there's two that I use. One is called Faithful, and the other is called Cine Style. And it depends on how ambitious I want to get with the video, how much color grading and correcting that I want to do. Now, one of the downsides of this camera is it does not shoot in 4K. It does not shoot 1080p in 60 frames per second. As I understand, the ADD does at least do 1080p 50, uh, 60 frames per second. This one doesn't, but that's okay. Okay, the tripod that this camera's uh, sitting on is just a cheapie that I got at Walmart. I believe it's called a Target. So it was around 40 bucks or something like that. But it does a good enough job for me keeping, uh, setting the camera on it when I make these talking head videos. Now, one of the cool things that I have done is in order to remotely control this camera is I actually have it tethered to my ASUS UX501 laptop running the Canon EOS utility. And that allows me to do things like adjust the exposure, uh, create custom white balance, change the picture profile, start and stop recording, all remotely on my laptop. So it acts like a giant monitor, which I really, really like. Okay, so let's talk about my B camera. And this is the Canon T6i Rebel camera. And it's a wonderful camera, it's more light, uh, weight than the 70D. It also has only 30 frames per second, 1080p, but it's got the same great color science. It doesn't have quite as good as autofocus as the 70D. It uses a hybrid autofocus system, but it still does a really good job, and I do shoot with CineStyle on it. And I also use the Rode Bid Mic or Video Mic Micro or Video Micro uh, shotgun microphone on top. And I keep it kind of in, uh, ready to go for vlogging. So it's mounted on the Manfrotto Pixie Evo 2 tripod. So that's what I use for my B cam. And it actually does very, very well. I do intend to do some vlogging next year. I just got to figure some things out with that. Now, sound is very important. In fact, people will forgive bad video over bad audio. And so on top of my 70D, I have the Audio-Technica 8024 shotgun microphone. And microphones are one of those things that uh, is very personal and you how you like how it does your voice. That's, that's really the most important thing right there. But it, it saves me from actually having to sync up audio in post or to wear a lapel mic, which I don't like lapel mics. Uh, I, just, I, don't like, I just don't like getting wired up uh, before I sit down to make my videos. 
So that's what I use to record the audio in my talking head videos, etc. Now for voiceovers, I use an Audio-Technica AT2020 USB microphone that's attached to a Heil boom arm, and it just does a really wonderful job. For vlogging, I use the Rode Video Micro um, microphone, and it's for several different reasons. One is weight. When you are vlogging, you want to shave off as much weight as you can to make it more portable. Secondly, it does not require a battery. It draws its power directly from the camera. And third, it automatically turns itself off and on when you're recording. And the sound is pretty doggone good on this microphone. Okay, lighting has always been difficult for me. My home office studio here, whatever you want to call it, uh, is geared more for business uh, that I have. But so I try to incorporate some ability to make YouTube videos in here. So lighting has kind of hit, been hit and miss for me. I've gotten better at it. And the two my or the, some of my main lighting are the newer 160 LED lights. Now these are only about 30 bucks right now on Amazon. And they're called 160, so they have 160 LEDs on them. They run on either double A batteries, and I think it takes six of them, or you can use these their the standard Sony NPF batteries. Uh, about as battery packs for them and get more time out of them. And of course, those are rechargeable. Or finally, like I did, I found an AC adapter that plugs in there and they can run off of uh, regular electricity. And that's how I have two of my three set up. Above me, I have a ceiling fan uh, that has three 60 watt daylight LED bulbs in them. And then I got another lamp that also has uh, three different 60 watt LED daylight bulbs. And I stick with daylight for the color temperature so everything kind of stays consistent light-wise in the office. I personally prefer natural light like I'm really shooting with right now, but uh, because I only have one window and it's winter time, I'm only limited to recording videos a certain time of the day, so if I want to record at night, well, then I have to uh, rely on these uh, lights. Of course, you can sink a lot of money in lighting. In fact, lighting is really critical to getting good quality video. Well, let's talk about tripods because you've got to have stable video. Nobody wants to watch herky-jerky video. And so my main tripod is the Manfrotto uh, 190X3 tripod. And it is a thing of beauty. It's all aluminum. It can go down to ground level. It is just a very well-made tripod and it's probably will last me the rest of my natural life is just so well made but the tripod is only part of the story a good head is also important and i use the manfrotto and it's the mhx pro 2w fluid head and that gives you really nice fluid pans and tilts with your camera not a substitute necessarily for a slider but you can do some really cool shots with that fluid head, and it is just nice and buttery smooth. Now for vlogging, I have a couple different tabletop tripods. One is the Joby uh, Focus, or the Joby Gorillapod Focus with Ball Head X, and it is a metal and very heavy, but very bendable and, um, and really amazing little tripod. Uh, but I don't use it that much. I actually prefer my Manfrotto Pixie Evo 2 tripod. I think it's more comfortable to hold in the hand. I think it weighs, it adds less weight to the, the, the setup, and it makes handheld video really nice because you can grab onto the bottom and use it as a stabilizer. So I made a, a video comparing uh, that um, tripod with the, uh, the uh, Joby Gorilla Pod uh, Focus with Ball Head X. Okay, so once I've actually shot my video, I've sat down at the desk and I've you know, recorded this, I've shot the B-roll. Well, it's time to edit the video. And I have two computers in my office. One is the Asus UX501 that I use for tethering, and also if I want to record some audio. Or, and what I primarily use is my Alienware uh, Area 51 PC. This has the Intel Core i7-6800K, it has six cores on it, it is overclocked, 16 gigs of RAM, and also an SSD with an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti video card. So this thing really cuts video really, really smoothly. Uh, I do need to increase the RAM on it, and I do want to increase the internal storage with a little bit bigger S or an additional SSD. But for right now, it gets the job done. Well, let's talk about the editing software I use. Once I import my footage 
onto my Samsung USB 3.0 external drive. I then go ahead and open up Magic's Vegas Pro 15. And I've tried lots of different editors, and it is one of my favorites. Final Cut Pro X or 10 is one of my favorites. Sony, or not Sony, but it used to be Sony. Magic's Vegas Pro is excellent. And I've also been enjoying working with DaVinci Resolve 14. In fact, I may switch over to Resolve 14 due to its excellent color grading capabilities. Once I edit the video there, I'm not quite finished. What I have to do is I have to store the original footage and then the finished product, the MP4 file that I up upload to YouTube, that MP4 file gets copied over to my Synology NAS device, and then it's on a RAID system, mir mirrored RAID system. So uh, I always have that copy of that original file. And then the final footage, the archival footage, I use an archiving uh, export from uh, Vegas Pro, and I archive it over to a three gigabyte or I'm sorry, three terabyte uh, G drive, three terabyte external USB drive. Well, I think that pretty well sums up how I make my videos. The equipment I use is nothing tremendously fancy. It's, you know, good quality gear and it should last me for many, many years. Eventually, I'll probably upgrade the 70D. I'm praying that the Canon 90D will offer 4K capability, but I'm not holding my breath on that. So that's it. I just wanted to share this with you, and thank you so much for watching. I look forward to your comments down below. Bruce Naylor, take care.